the book of Luke chapter 14 verse 16. If you in the habit of maybe writing a title to a message down, uh, you've probably heard it before. Me and Doug's talked about it. Uh, smell the cooking. Me and him won't preach it the same because I've got some different scriptures. But me and him's talked about the title to this message. Verse 16, it says, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. And sent his servants at supper time say to them that were bid come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. First said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And others said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And others said, I married a wife and therefore cannot come. Boy, ain't that silly. Why didn't he bring her with him? I mean, I want my wife to come with me. I wanted, when I got saved, I wanted my wife to go to heaven. So that servant came and shooed uh, his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being, being angry, said unto his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt <laughs> and the blind. And the servants said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. You know, there's going to be some that ain't going to be there, are they? They've had uh, invitation. Might have been like some of these right here, and they made a lot of different excuses. And the whole story of it was they just didn't want to go. Wasn't interested. Heard a old free will Baptist preacher one time preach a message. I still got it wrote down at the top of my Bible right here. He entitled, I Ain't Hungry. <laughs> you know, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And I still remember that old preacher preaching that message. I ain't, he didn't call it hungry, he said hungry. He said, I ain't hungry. He wasn't from Fed County. <laughs> book of the Revelation chapter 19 and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and honor and power unto the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fortification and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand and again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Blessed, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Father, as I come to you again tonight, I come, Father, in need. I come in need of your help and of your spirit and of your anointing. I've learned a long time ago, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I can't, Lord. I've got to have you. And Father, like it was so many years ago, if you don't show up, I'll just sit down, Lord. So I said this morning, I don't want to be a, as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal to the people. 
Father, I want to be just like them. When we go home, we'll say, Lord, we heard from heaven. Yes. God bless this, your people. May thy will be done. And Father, we'll thank you and we'll praise you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. I thought of something yesterday evening. Before dark, I, I told my wife, I said, well, call my, my dad and mom, see how they're getting along. She said, well, I figured you'd make a trip out there. And I thought, well, I guess I just will then. <laughs> so I said, I'll be back directly. And I got my little old Chevrolet four-wheel drive and out the road to tour. I went out there and we had a great time, just talked and laughed and one thing and another. And I don't know, it was probably close to 8 o'clock. Time just got by me. And I said, I gotta go home. And when I got ready to go in the house, I smelt something, an aroma. <laughs> Gina was getting uh, things ready for today, is what she was doing. Brother John, she had been cooking bread. I'm telling you what, she's the best bread maker. I, now, I, I'm telling you, if anywhere I've ever been, I don't know if y'all ever eat her bread, but I'm telling you, it, it's bread now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I really am. I mean, when she makes a pan of bread, you're standing there with a spoon and a, a bucket of butter. <laughs> together. We walked around and batting our eyes at each other and grinning at each other and holding hands. And So uh, they had a home ec teacher there, Miss Ramsey. And Gina signed up for that. Now Gina, when she, she graduated the year after I did, but she was a salutatorian. And they interviewed her for the yearbook. And they asked her in there, what are your plans? And you going to college and the different things. I still got that yearbook. And you know what she, she, she said? No, I'm going to be a housewife and I'm going to marry Danny Lay. <laughs> so she went to school literally to learn to cook and to sew and to do anybody. And to do anything so that she could take care of my house while I was not working and doing things that fellas were supposed to do. Right. Right. Boys, I'm telling you what, that cook. Lord have mercy. Yes, me. I thank God for Miss Ramsey. One of y'all was laughing, but I walked up on that porch and started going in that house, and I could smell the aroma of that bread. And I thought, Lord have mercy. They bread. And not only just rolls did she make, but she made pepperoni rolls. Oh. <laughs> I could smell it. And my mouth was watered, and I'm running in the kitchen, and I got me to a uh, Thank you. I, I said, Lord, bless the food. And I thanked him for it. And, oh, you know what I'm talking about. And then today we got home and Jamie and my daughter was already there. We pulled up and Jamie said, oh, good. Or Gina said, oh, good. Jamie is here and she will have everything heated up. Oh, we walked in the house and the aroma of that spaghetti that Gina had made that morning. And Jamie was heating it up. And it was just overwhelming. And my mouth went to water, and then while everybody was hugging each other in the grand, they've all been in, in Florida, and we hadn't got to see them for a week and a half or two weeks, however long it'd been. They was all hugging and, and uh, saying their hellos, and I'd be I'd run right on by and got me a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get a whip. <laughs> oh, I couldn't wait. I could smell it. I mean, it had. We're headed to a, a summer. Yes, yeah, man. We're headed there. Amen. I thought of all the troubles and the trials, the cares of this life, and what I just read, and we're hearing in Revelation chapter 19. He says, and after this, after what? When you see that, you ask the question, what are you talking about? After this, after these things, after after that, what, what do you mean, Lord? You see, we have done been at this time. The church has done been raptured out. Yeah. And we're there. Yeah. Yeah. We're home. Yeah. Brother Bill, there's no more hauling chemicals in big trucks. There's no more, brother, there's no more selling cars yeah. on car lots. There's not. There's no more mining coal. Yeah. There's no more building roads and setting power poles. It's all over with. Yeah. And we're home. Finally home. Amen. If you read that, you'll see I'm telling you the truth. And after this, after what? After we're caught out and after we're already there. He said, I heard something.
abruptly. He said, I heard the voice of much people. Yeah. I look at this side, there's not a whole lot of people. Yeah. There's still room on this side for people. Many people, the reason they're not here is because they're not hungry. I said that. Yeah. The children I'm here to tell you when we get home, yeah. there's going to be much people. Yeah. He said, I heard the voice of much people in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. They were saying something. Mm -hmm. They were saying a praise word, was they not? Yeah, man, right. Yes, they was. Now, it's spelled different than what we say it. Hallelujah. It's spelled A-L-L. -L. We spell it with an H, but I'm here to tell you, I've done some reading on this word. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. It's all said exactly the same. Yeah, it don't matter if you're in Italy and they speak, uh, whatever they speak, Italian, they still say hallelujah. <laughs> trying to say is even in America even though we speak English these words that we say different right. it's just like down in Boone County and the other counties they say right and that yeah. I'll cut you with my knife <laughs> that's what they say we say knife and night and different things yeah. but this word right here it's pronounced the same worldwide. It really is. It don't matter if you're a Jew in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem. If he says it, you're going to understand what he says. If he says, hallelujah, you're going to understand that he's saying a praise word. Yeah. Did you know that this is the first time that it's recorded in the Bible? In the 19th chapter? Children were home by this time. All things is already behind us. We're having a good time. We've already at this time seen the Lord face to face. We've already had a homecoming. We've seen our loved ones that's gone on before us. We've seen them that fought the way, that paved the way, that laid the foundations. And we'll see them, and there they are. I thought who that's going not going to be there at this time there's going to be surely there's five virgins that's not going to be there for a simple reason they didn't have no oil on their land that's what the Bible says you know the cry was made the bridegroom cometh and they went out to meet him but they didn't have no oil they had to try to go get them some but it was too late the door had been shut and then I thought of others I thought of them that I read them to you about. They was those that made excuses. I've thought about when Christ returns, but those that are left behind, I can hear the excuses. Could you hear them cry out, Lord? I had full intentions after the race next Sunday to make things right with you. Lord, I had full intentions after the kids got grown up. Lord, after I sowed my wild oats, but they waited too long and their excuses they're, they're not there Judas that sold out Judas is not going to be there there's going to be those that left this life without Christ they put it off is what they done there have been so many that has I went to the bedside of men that was dying and begged them literally got on my knees beside of their cot I went to Clay County one time, and there was a man I was asked to go see. And he let me in. He was living in a little old, little old trailer. It wasn't much bigger than an office trailer. One of them old, about eight feet wide. 
He was laying in an army car. He couldn't get up. He was on oxygen. He was dying. I literally got down on my hands and knees beside him, got him with a hand, and begged that man to come to Jesus. What he said to me, he said, I'll come when I get good and ready. Now you ready. He left this life, and as far as I know, he probably lifted his eyes in hell. I'm glad I don't have that uh, that ability to put one here or put them there. It's not my job. I wouldn't want that job either. By no means, but things didn't look good. There have been those that lived out where we live and they've left this life and it just didn't look good. There was never a mention of Christ upon their lips. They had no use of the church. They had no use for God and they left this old world. They'll not be there. But the Bible says this, and after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. There will be a lot of people there. <laughs> people. That's what you are as a people. Right. Amen. Now, you ever think about it? There's going to come a time when it's all going to be said and done. The last gravel is put in place. Everything's finished up. God's plan is done, and we're going to be there. Amen. Yeah. That is us that is shouting right there. Right. That's you sitting in these seats one of these days. You're going to be that one over there that your voice will mingle in with the rest of us. Amen. And we'll be home and we'll be saying something. Amen. We'll say it together. We'll say, Hallelujah, Amen. is what we'll say. Yeah. There was four things in verse 1 that he said. He said, salvation is what he said. <laughs> Read it for yourself. He said, saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. I told you this morning, we'll finally understand what salvation entails. It's no wonder we'll be shouting. Yeah. Yeah. Salvation, we'll say. Can you imagine then fully knowing the full extent of what salvation brought you from? Mm. Think about what you've been brought from. Think how He's kept you up through these years, through our honoriness, through our sinfulness. Amen. We'll shout. We'll know. We'll understand then what it costs. Salvation, listen, is free to you and me. But children did one free. They were the great price of the pay. Being saved. You know, all these years it wasn't, and yes, I wanted my dad far proof. I didn't want him to go to hell, but I wanted him to be able to live and to be able to know what it is to know Christ. Yeah. You see, that's what it's all about is to know him, yeah. to walk with him, yeah. to fellowship with him, to be able to know him, not only in pardon and forgiveness of sin, but when you're in trouble. When he comes on the scene. When you're sick and you don't know if you're going to get to see springtime come. That happened this past winter. Second week of November, we come home from church on a Sunday. I'll never forget this. Everything was fine. I felt fit as a fiddle. My children was on the porch. It was a pretty day after church. They all left. And me and Jada was sitting in the rocking chairs and all of a sudden, I said, babe, we'll put the car in the garage. We'll take the little car to church tonight. I walked out to the garage. And by the time I got back to steps, I said, sugar, if I don't get in the house right now, I'm not going to make it. And I got down, and I couldn't use my legs. I couldn't move. And for two days, just about, I sat in a chair. Couldn't use my legs. My daughter finally came with enough painkillers that I could kill the pain enough. They helped me get to the bed, and I laid, and I laid. And I finally went to a doctor. She told me just a little bit. She said, you got E. coli bacteria. And it, it just it got worse, didn't it, Jenny? It went from being sick to dying. And I got coughed so bad that I felt like my stomach was going to bust. And all along, I was still had that peace. Down deep inside, if I go home now, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That lasted until April. I'd like, like to die. I told Chuck, I said, I'll never see the springtime again, buddy. I said, I'll never get to see the pretty green of springtime. God spared me. Oh, the leaves started turning. And I'd go out and sit on my porch and I'd look and I'd cry and I'd shout. She'd come outside and I'd say, look, look, look yonder. And then the birds would come and sing to me. They would. They would come and they would sing. I would pray to God and I'd tell that heart. Thank you for coming and singing to the preacher. What about it? The little bird, God sent.
did them the same to me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You see, it's not just to be far through. It's to know Him. Yeah. <laughs> to walk with Him. Yeah. To know. Yeah. Right. To walk with Him through troubles and trials and hard times. And to walk with Him when the car is just completely destroyed. <laughs> Chuck was coming home from work. She just called me and I was getting dinner fixed for her. And, I, and by the way, I like doing that. Does that make me a sissy? I look like a sissy. Thank you, brother. I was fixing dinner. I got a phone call and she said, Honey, I wrecked the vehicle. I said, Are you hurt? She says, I'm okay. Hey man, yeah. too bad. He hung on the vehicle. We looked at each other. What are we going to do? But there he was. Yeah. Walking with us. Yeah. <laughs> I said, honey, was you afraid? She said it clung to the bridge. She hit a bridge head on. And it went up over the bridge and then it come back down. She said, I just shut my eyes. God delivered her. Hey Amen. Yeah. She said, my God. It's not just that one of these days we'll be in heaven. But you can walk with him here and experience him here. You say, but preacher, we don't we we're, we're not walking with him like that. Well, listen, the Bible says that your sins have separated you from your God. If you've got sin in your life, get it out. Man, walk with him. Walk with him. I believe that one day we'll fully understand what this word salvation is and it'll be at that time. Yeah. By the way, here we're shouting on credit. <laughs> hey man, but when we get there face to face, right. it's no wonder we'll say hallelujah. Amen. 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 And then there was another word in this. I like it a lot. He said, salvation and glory. I have never actually ever got to see the glory of God. Uh, you can't live and see it. He told Moses, did he not? No man see my face and live. Moses wanted to see the glory of God. You know the message Doug preached? Remember that when Doug said that when Moses got ready to die, he believed that God said, Moses, turn around and look at me. That's how he died. Because he saw that glory. Brother, I've never seen the actual glory of God. But I've caught glimpses of it. I've seen it on your face. I've seen it on your, I've seen it on your face tonight when you stood up, Brother Paul. I caught a glimpse of the glory of God. Praise God. We've been together and all of a sudden we can feel the power of God and the Spirit of God. And I look and I'll catch a glimpse yeah. of the glory of God. But then... We will actually see right. the glory of God. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to literally be standing there and see God, see Jesus Christ, the glory of God? <laughs> ah, goodness gracious, it's no wonder, church, that at that time, there we are, we've made it, we're home. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Salvation and glory! <laughs> And honor, they said. Yeah, yeah. We'll honor him. Amen. Amen. Our president today, it used to be that America honored their president whether, whether or not he was of their party. They had honor, did they not? For the man. And by the way, even today, if you've got any sense, mm -hmm. you honor him because of the position. Right. Amen. Right. Whether I agree with everything or not is beside the point. Right. He's a man that's been placed in an honorable right. position. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But he's still just a man. Right. I'm talking about the one. Hey, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that bled and died on Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Uh, the one that was made sin who knew no sin. Yeah. Oh, we'll honor him. Yeah. Oh, how my, can you imagine all oh, that one that done it all for you and me. Right. He done for you what you couldn't do for yourself. He done for me what I couldn't do for myself. Yeah. By the way, look at me. Yeah. And I am kept by the power of God. Hey, Get ready to get to that, Lord. Hey, Amen. Hey, Four things he 
said right yonder. He spoke of that. He spoke, of, we'll say, power. Can you imagine the power that we'll witness when we stand before him? When we're there in this uh, innumerable crowd of people. It's still a crowd that no man could number. God could number them. Everybody there is supposed to be there. Amen. Them that's been born again, not a one was left behind. No indeed. When I was a little old boy growing up, I got two older brothers. My oldest brother, 67, 68, somewhere in that range. My other brother's about 63. I'm 58 years old. I was the little one. They'd sneak off and leave me. I could still see them as they went up the hill. About a quarter mile from my house, I could look and see my brothers going up that hill, and I'd stand there and weep and cry. Wondered why they wouldn't let me go. I was the baby, they wouldn't take me. I thought about one time. I used to have a school bus driver, his name was Henry Bennett. He deviled me about that until he died. Even after I grew up, he'd laugh every time he seen me. He told me that when I was a little old boy, he said my two brothers come down and got on the school bus and he looked and I come out of the house from underwear and didn't have nothing but a Sears robot catalog and tried to get on his school bus with my brothers. <laughs> and they left me. He said that he felt so bad, he said I stood in the yard crying as the school bus pulled out. Children, I'll not be left behind. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You'll not be left behind. If you're the youngest one, I feel sorry for you. But you'll not be left behind. Amen. And it ain't no wonder that we're shouting a praise word. Hallelujah. You know what? We'll be smelling the cooking right then. Can you only imagine? We're going to get to it here in just a minute. And there's another reason we're going to be shouting. Verse 2 says, For true and righteous are his judgments. <coughs> For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. The counterfeit church will be done away with. And you know what we'll say about it? Hallelujah. Amen. All that names the name of Christ don't belong to him. There'll be those that will stand before him one of these days and they'll say these words. Lord, uh, did we not do many mighty works in thy name? I believe he'll be pretty brazen about it. Lord, did we not cast out demons in thy name? And he'll say these words, depart from me. Right. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Right. Ain't that sad? Oh. Ain't that sad that they could have had the real thing? Hey, do you know there's counterfeit Bibles? Yeah. Sure there are counterfeit books. Sure. Counterfeit Bibles. Think of that. Right. My goodness gracious, counterfeit churches. The devil's always had a counterfeit. I remember in the days of Moses back yonder. You remember Moses throwed the rod down to become a serpent? You remember that uh, they called for the magicians? They did the same thing. Remember the frogs, the plague of frogs? I hate a stinking frog still yet. I really do. I, I, can, I can handle, I can handle, uh, I can't handle snakes. I almost lied to you. I don't like snakes either, but nevertheless. I'll tell you how much I don't like snakes. Ask my wife. I found a big snake hat in my garage. I thought that, that snake's in here somewhere. And I happened to look up in the rafters of that old garage. And there was a black snake up there. He was about six and a half foot long. That rascal was that big around. And I thought, Mr. Man, you just lay right there. I'll be right back. <laughs> I went and mixed me up some gas and put it in a sprayer. I sprayed that in his eyes. By that time, Chuck was outside and had my shotgun. She done had it to me. That thing come down that wall and I was saying, Boom! And she was a squalling. Don't shoot him. I'll get him with the hoe. Hey, he's holding that back around. Thank you, buddy. He's up. He done down when I done blown him in half and done reloaded. And she said, Don't shoot. And I was making sure. I blowed concrete, dirt, everything. Boards, everything out of there. Didn't I? Hey, man. That's a good snake now. And I got about as much respect for a frog as I do a snake. <laughs> hey Amen. And you just think way back yonder. Oh. My goodness, they was already in trouble. Yeah. God sent a plague of frogs and they had them magicians do the same thing. Yeah. 
But the great difference was Moses could get rid of them. Right. Magicians couldn't. You see, they was counterfeit is what they was. Right. There'll come a time that we'll shout. Amen. Because the counterfeit is gone. You know what we'll say? Hallelujah. Amen. Did you know that it's recorded four times in this one chapter? Here it is. There was reason being that we'll be saying that, and that's us. It says, And the four and the twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. There they are, the 24 elders. First mention I've got them that I can remember is in the fourth chapter of the Revelation. Remember them? Them's the ones that cast their, their uh, uh, crowns at his feet. Huh? And bowed there. That's them. I've asked, and I think I'm right. I think whoever has told me this is right. That's representation of all the Old Testament saints and the New Testament uh, all together. But then there's those beasts that fell down. You remember who them fellows is? Them was created beings of God. And they fly around the throne of God is what they do. They're six-winged creatures. You'll find them also in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, back there. And with twain, they did cover their feet. And with twain, they did cover their eyes. And with twain, they did fly. And you know, they've known the Lord a long, long time. And still yet, every time they look over and see you know what they say? Holy, holy, holy. It's recorded that they fell down right here. We're there with them. We're there. You're there. You'll see this. You'll see those six-winged creatures fall out before him and say, Hallelujah! Oh, what a time we're going to have. Can you imagine what a church service is going to be? We're going to have church and we'll leave. I see nothing wrong with eating. Amen. And then, I'll try not to hold you long. This is so exciting to me. Listen to verse 5. This is so wonderful. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. Not just the preachers. Right. Not just the deacons. Not just the singers. Not just the testifiers. Not just the setters that don't say nothing. No. All ye. Yeah, every one of us. Mm -hmm. will say something. Oh, I've wondered what it will sound like. I've asked this question before. <laughs> oh, what's that going to sound like? He says, And I heard as it were the voice of a great mother multitude as a voice of many waters and as a voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for Lord God omnipotent reigneth I read this passage of scripture some time back I drove down to Canal Falls I wanted to hear what the sound of many waters was and I tried to place it and I, I was but John I was wrong what this is, is our voices mingling together. Hey man, it's what it is. I wondered what the voice of thunder would sound like. I would hear the thunder come up New River. I live between New River and Golly River. They're out Saturday Road, not far out of Anstead. Golly River, they call it the Bend of Golly, is down here. And it goes into Golly Bridge. And then New River runs on the other side of it. So I can go to the top of the mountain and, uh, at night and I can see New River Gorge Bridge. When the storms comes, you know what happens? I can hear the thunder coming up the river. Either it's coming up Golly River or it's coming up New River. We know that it's coming. And I've heard that thunder and it just roars and roars and roars. You know what our voices is going to sound like? It's going to sound as thunder. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be saying a praise word together. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Did you ever get in a crowd in the church before the service starts and people talks and fellowships and laughs together and roar into the fellowship hall and you hear them over there? Now, you really can't make out all that everybody's saying because the voices is mingling together. Right. It'll be like that there. All the praise and the thanking. And the worshiping of our Savior. Yeah. Amen. Home at last. Yeah. Home at last. No more cancer. Mm. Yes. No more anger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
No more shortness of breath. Mm. Yeah. No more. Yeah. It's all behind us then. Mm. Kenny, the body shop will be shut down. Yeah. 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 No more wrecks. Yeah. Yeah. And also no more wrecked lives. Yeah. Yeah. You know what we'll get to see and we'll shout over? We'll get to see the devil throw into the pit. Right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, buddy. Yes, we will. Yeah. Amen. I hope that the Lord lets me wear a good old pair of holy work boots. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I'd like to give him one good, one good kiss. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Listen. And by the way, if you ain't going to love the Lord and serve the Lord, you ought to just make up with the devil because you're going to spend some time with him. Oh, Amen. But what we need to do is just get reacquainted with God. Amen. Amen. And our church needs to get reacquainted with God. Amen. And reacquainted with His ways because we're going to spend eternity with Him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And by the way, I understand that some of us here tonight, we're what they call inside chowders, but when we get there, y'all wait a minute, you know what an inside chowder is? I used to do that so backwards, ain't nothing wrong with it. I was, I was, I've told y'all about how backwards I was when God called me. People all around, back then people shouted. They really did. People shouted, and I could still see women with white hair, and they really did. They'd have white hands, wouldn't they, Jim? The agony that aggravated preacher on his preacher, you remember Charles Hardy, he preached for what? And Sunday, Sunday, we didn't get out of church until 2 o'clock, usually. I mean, he prayed, people say it. And they listened and shouted, and I can still see the hairpins and the, and the, uh, the white hankies. They, they shouted. And I was backwards, I couldn't shout. But down deep inside, I was saying in my mouth, praise the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. Hey, man, God could hear me. Because he's a searcher of hearts. I remember the first time that I ever broke out. That like scared me to death. I thought everybody in the church would pass out and nobody even knows. <laughs> Hallelujah. Preacher, who all is going to be there? Who's going to be there? Luke chapter 15, the lost sheep. That Jesus found will be there. Amen. That one that was lost in the wilderness. Amen. And he laid it on his shoulder. He went out and he searched for it until he found it. And when he did, he laid it upon his shoulder. And they was rejoicing in the midst of the angels over one sinner that repented. There he is. Yeah. Amen. You know who that is? Yes. Amen. That's you. Right. That's me. Right. There he is. There he is. He's shouting. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who's going to be there, preacher? Glad you asked me. There's that prodigal. Yeah. There he is. That one to spin all. Come home stinking with the filth of the hog pen upon him. Right. The one that the father ran and met and fell on his neck and kissed, dirt and all. Amen. That's the same one. Yeah. Who's going to be there, preacher? Thank He's going to be there. Yeah. Amen. 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 That lost sheep, that prodigal, there they are. And then, look with me if you would. There have been those that's done gone on in the last year from this church. Mm -hmm. yeah. There they are. Yeah. No more look of sojourning on their faces. Can you imagine? Oh, you know what I think that they're going to look like? And we will too. You ought to see me at 33 years old. I, well, my hair and beard have done start to turn white, but I still had a lot of black in it. Yeah. Hey, man, had all my teeth. <laughs> Didn't weigh about 225, 230 pounds. Done gained about 100 pounds since then. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I believe it's going to look like they're about 33 years old when we got here. Yeah. Say, preacher, I don't believe it. That's all right with me. What you believe? I believe it. Right. Amen. Yeah. And we'll see them again over there. They won't be coughing. Mm -hmm. They won't be racked with pain. Right. Yeah. Their minds will be right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be hugging each other. Yeah. Say, I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. salvation, glory, and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Yeah. We've made it home. Yeah. And we're on the other shore. Yeah. Won't that be wonderful? Yeah. Going home. Going home. I work in 
construction about all of my life. They was about 10 years that I traveled plumb across the United States. And they was times I'd stay gone up to three months at a time. That was back through the 80s, there wasn't no work in West Virginia. Me and the boys would get homesick. And I can still remember calling. We was down in uh, Key West, Florida, me and some of the men. We've been gone and gone and gone. And I called the company, called the vice president of the company, and said, I'm going home. He said, no, you ain't. We got work in Miami, and I don't care if you do. I said, I'm going home. And I'll never forget that night about 1130. I called that my guy again, and I said, I've got the job done, and we're headed home. He said, no, 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 you're not going home. And I said, hide and watch me. I said, you'll be standing along the road up yonder in Fort Lauderdale. And I said, when I go through, I said, I'll blow the horn at you. And he slammed the phone down. I remember calling Jay and I said, honey, I'm coming home. And all the way home, it took me 26 hours from down there to drive home. But all the way home, honey, I'm telling you, I was happy and tickled to death. I was going home. Yeah. When I got home and finally laid down in my bed where I could get some rest. Yeah. And work was behind me. And all that was behind me back yonder. I laid there and finally sighed and said, I'm home. Yeah. One of these days, it's no one day. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We'll say, we're home. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But hey, we'll know love then like we've never known before. Yeah. I've loved that kid back yonder since we were little kids. <laughs> I really have. Yeah. Since we were kids together. <laughs> So we will experience love over there, not as husband and wife, right. no indeed, yeah. right. but as the children of God more than we'll ever understand. Yeah. It ain't no wonder if we'll be saved. Yeah. Don't you love him tonight? Oh, yeah. Ain't you no funny reason to love him? Oh, yeah. oh and to fall down before him, even oh, here and say thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for what you've kept me from. Oh, can you imagine where you've been tonight if it hadn't been for him? More than likely you've been in hell with your back broke and deserved every bit of it. You're sitting here tonight with a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. the yeah. And then we'll sit down at heaven's table. You see, because the marriage supper of the Lamb is ready. There it is. All things are ready now. Yeah. And we'll sit down. Can you imagine smelling the cooking of heaven? The freshly baked bread? The manna that the children of Israel right. seen fall from heaven and they just went out and gathered it up? Yeah. Can you imagine? Smell it. Gina. Sometimes I get to preaching about your cooking and I can, my mouth will go to water. I get to talking about homeland and my mouth goes to water. Amen. Smell the cooking of home. Children, it's real. Yeah. It is. This is not some fairy tale. This is not a, some made up message of an old mountain preacher. It's there. Yeah. And it's waiting for the children of God. Yeah. And we're gone. Hey, preacher, how come we're gone? We're going because of Jesus. You might say here tonight, I don't know why he saved me. I can tell you why God saved you. For Christ's sake. For what he done on Calvary's cross is why he saved you. When he said it is finished, God's plan of salvation was done. Jesus went away. He said, I quit with this in the 14th chapter of the book of John. He told them right before he went away, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. If you believe in God, believe in me also, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Yeah. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And listen to me. He said if he'd go, he'd come again. Right, right. To receive you unto his own. Where he is, you may be also. Right. And one of these days, we're going to get to go there. Yeah. Did you know something? It could be before the midnight hour tonight. Yeah. 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 You know, before midnight tonight, we could have done in and have two or three hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Won't that be something? Yeah. Huh? Hey, man. Get to see all of them. See Abraham, huh? Yes. Yeah. And Jacob. You could see Adam. I believe he's there. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. To see the old saints of God that's done went on. See Apostle Paul, a little short fowler. Hey, man. See Zacchaeus that preached about and was sung about tonight. Yeah. Get to see him. He's there. He's there. Oh, we honor the homeland of the soul. Going home. Can you smell the cooking? That's my little short message. Got to get the pianist to come. And uh, song later and tonight, if you have a, have a need to pray, we ask you to come.